Tally our internet. My name is VXE and welcome to day 20 of Madvent. We are entering the twos, my friends. We are entering the two X's of the Madvent calendar. It's a final stretch, basically. Let's jump ahead, see what we've got. We have got... It's a bird. Or is it a plane? Or is it... Ah... It's a lighthouse. I thought it was a bird, and now I th now I can see the lighthouse. I can't see the bird anymore. Isn't that weird? Let's go. Futile. What's this about? If it's anything about that, uh, anything like that lighthouse game that I previously played on my channel. Well, well, look at this. Isn't this uh? It's dark. It's dreary. I have a jump button, and the footstep sounds are satisfyingly crunchy. Let's go. I can't sprint. This is a terrible reception area for any building, let alone a lighthouse. Hi, hello, and the, okay. Wow, you, you'd have thought that the um. The, the property developer, not the not the developer developer, the property developer in universe would have maybe made it a little bit brighter and like four little windows for light. Look at all of the natural light you have out here. So much of it. What was this built in the 40s? I'm stalling. Let's go. Why... Why are these steps untouched by the atmospheric volumetrics? Hi, hello, yes, everything is futile. Am I looking out for something? Hello? It appears that nothing is happening. I probably have to go back down. I have my window open because it's getting very warm in my room. Unfortunately, that means car sound effects. <laughs> sound effect. Okay, all right. Oh. For a second, I thought that um, the staircase had been made infinite. I had been mistaken. Uh, it looks like any sort of enjoyment of anything in this area is futile. So I am going to invite myself to walk into the ocean. Which I can't do. Okay. Hmm. I... I'm extremely puzzled. I can't walk into the ocean. I I genuinely thought that this was going to be like, nope, there's nothing to do here. You've got to walk into the sea. And it was a game about depression. Or some such. I forgot I can jump. Can I jump over the railing? Oh, no. Is this actually the exact thing that I was thinking it was going to be? Except I have to jump over the railing. Or does the game count how many times I come up here in a futile manner? Or am I forgetting? So I, I can't escape. Okay, I can't press escape. I can't jump over anything. I can't click, tab, nothing, shift, nothing. Control, nothing. This is... Um... Uh, a confusing little experience. Is that a noise? Did I just hear something? Have I already forgotten what the premise of the game was just by reading the... the description? I'm feeling very lonely here right now. I, I need Willem Dafoe. I thought I just saw something. 
like a ghost out of the corner of my periphery. I was probably mistaken. Am I missing something very obvious, like a button or a switch? A companion? Can I help you? Uh, and anything? A Christmas miracle. Anything that, that's going to tell me it, it's going to be okay. I was hoping I could climb onto the roof of this here building, but I can't even do that. It's also futile. Can I scale the walls? Please let me be Spider-Man just for one day. Can I see anything in the distance if I get to the right place? Maybe the game is that I have to stand at the end of the pier for a certain amount of time. Maybe the whole point is that trying to get anything out of this experience is futile. Maybe it's a meta-commentary. Did I miss an instruction? It's moments like this where tea was made. Moments like this that tea was made for. There is no controller support in this game. <clears throat> that is a shame because I really like this controller. Like obviously it's the sort of the Nintendo, uh, the Super Nintendo form factor, but it fits in the hands really, really well. It's very comfortable. I like it probably about as much as I like the official Pro 2. Now I modded the, uh, the well I say modded, I opened them up and I swapped over the face buttons just to kind of make the, the color schemes a little bit more cohesive. I think the darker sticks were supposed to be on this controller, but I didn't like that. So I swapped them over basically. Um, yeah, and this basically does everything that this does, except this has the back paddles, so I can sign buttons to those too, but this is a fantastic controller, especially for something like the Nintendo Switch or the Steam Deck, something that you can put in your bag and travel around with. It's a really, really good, high quality controller. Now, one thing that I don't like quite as much as the... This is the 8-bit do SNES uh, 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 SN30 Pro, SF30 Pro, Super Famicom 30 Pro. Now I did originally get this guy. Now this one is tiny. It's really, really small. I got this with a magazine subscription of all things. The it's still got both shoulder buttons. It's just that they're next to each other instead of behind each other. Uh, the sticks still click, so this is a fully featured controller. And I just really like it. The sticks feel okay. They kind of have like that sort of Nintendo 64 uh, sort of analog, uh, sort of like where it feels like they kind of slot into place. It's not like a very smooth rounded motion. Speaking of the Nintendo 64 controller, I also have the Nintendo 64 controller. There's really not much to be said about the Nintendo 64 controller. This is the Nintendo Switch Online version, so it is wireless. Uh, I can connect it to my PC, but there's not much that I can do with it because I can't change the button layout through Steam. But it still feels as funky as the day I first got it. That is not an official rumble pack. They've just filled it in. Uh, that is not usable. But still, probably the best novelty controller. 
It used to be mainstream, now it's novelty. Crazy. But one of the best feats of engineering of all time is, of course, the Valve Steam Controller. Now, this thing is beautiful. I have had this for probably going on seven or eight years now. And it is just as wonderful as the day that I first got it. The day that it develops stick drift will be the worst day of my life. But it's just such an incredible controller. Fully programmable. It's got dual track pads. It's just beautiful. It's a really, really good controller. I love the clickiness of the shoulder buttons. I can technically use this right now to look around in the game and I can see that nothing has happened. That is me moving around. I love it. Uh, I would honestly replace all of my analog sticks with a trackpad if I could, but it turns out, unfortunately, that that is not... Um, it's not really practical. Oh, it has gyro controls as well, so I can just move it around. And stuff happens on screen. Perfect. Wonderful. Beautiful. 10 out of 10. If you can get a Steam controller, get a Steam controller. This is uh, not really doing anything. Oh. Well, it turns out that this game has left stick control, but not right stick. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um... Hmm. I really feel like I'm going to release this completely unedited. Purely just, I feel like it, it fits with the theme that I think the game is trying to tell me right now. <laughs> uh, okay, let's all F4. Let's, let's just quit out of this. Did I miss something here? No, it literally just says an empty aisle with a small structure. Is it not giving me controls on purpose? Show me a game where it showed me the controls. Probably just day one, right? Day one showed me the controls for the game. Group for the fabric of time and space. Yeah, yeah, it does. Huh. I'm going to load in one more time. I really want to know if I've missed something here. If... If this game is genuinely nothing, I applaud the developer for their boldness. Because developing a, a lonely, desolate, depressing, isolated island, calling your game futile and basically just saying, there is nothing here, is a bold strategy for a, for a game. And I genuinely mean that in a, in a mostly positive way. And like, look, it's free, right? If this was paid, then yeah, okay, maybe... Yeah, you could claim it was art and that it had monetary value in that kind of way. But as a free project in an advent calendar full of games, uh, releasing something where the goal of the game is to just accept that nothing is going to happen is... I, I think it's a fantastic uh, expression of uh, creative spirit. It could also just be that the developer wanted to get something into the calendar and didn't have enough time to flesh out anything. But I'm not here to judge. Because this this game is... It, it's, it's getting me to talk about it. I am interacting with it. Dare I say it, I'm enjoying the, the monologue. No, no, no. Nay, 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 nay. Let's call this a dialogue, okay? In my head, I am riffing off of you guys. Now, whilst you are not presently here, I am certainly interacting with you, way, uh, you guys in a way that um, assumes some kind of creative input on your side as well. Now, that's going to be through views, it's going to be through comments, etc. 
uh, which is really going to blow your mind when uh, you come to realize that through the comment section, we turn a dialogue into a diatribe. I think I'm using that word correctly. Google? Hey, Google, please define diatribe. No, thank you. I'm ashamed. <laughs> okay, so that was the wrong word to use. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But never mind that. Yeah, it's just... Nothing. And I think I'm, I'm willing to accept that. I've looked around, I've pressed buttons, I can't even quit the game. I've been up, I've been down, I've been all around, up in the air, and on the ground. I went for a walk, and I went for a ride, and there's nothing to see, so I'm going to go back inside. They were the opening words for a uh, British TV show called Come Outside where an old lady with her her dog Pippin, uh, uh, Aunt, Auntie Mabel, I think her name was, uh, and her dog Pippin had a private plane, and they would fly to places and be like, oh, look, this is how cheese is made. Oh, look, this is how we put the fluff inside of teddy bears. Have you ever wondered what magnets are? It was it was wonderful. It was it was really wonderful British programming, uh, and they were the the opening words for the for the theme tune basically. I've told you guys about my controllers. I've told you guys about Come Outside, the British TV show from the nineties. What else could I possibly say? This is how people would have to pass time on a on an isolated island, right? Uh, now, I imagine that they wouldn't have phone service, but let's go on to Wikipedia. And let's see what the first random article that it gives me is going to be. Random. How do I choose a random article again? Random, 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 random. <laughs> close that random article ah it's on the left hand side i think here we go random so we have got miriam alves uh it might be alves Mir miriam aparecida alves is a brazilian writer activist and poet she was born in Sao Paulo and began writing at the age of 11 after she bought herself her first typewriter at 18. Well done. She earned a degree in social work and worked as a social worker for the city of Sao Paulo. Her writings mostly covered race and gender issues. Wow, that's that's really cool. Including the European beauty standard in Brazil and women's roles in social construct. She was inaugurated into the municipal school for Professor Miriam Alves of uh, Macedo... Uh, Macedo... Macedo Guimarães in March 2016. I I cannot speak any kind of land language, so please do bear with me. Goes on about her travels. Uh, traveled to a Portuguese school in 2010. So this is really recent. She is a, a recent figurehead. Oh yeah, born in 1952. Of course, silly me. She had trouble publishing her work. She used a close off atmosphere Brazil contained towards Afro Brazilian writers. She has collectors of poem uh, collections of poems that have been published. Many of her works have been featured in anthologies, including Anthologia Contemporanea de Poesia Negra Brasile Brasileia. <laughs> I tried, okay, I tried. Cool. We've learned. 
we passed some more time on this futile, futile rock. I've been recording for 22 minutes. Work was interesting today. By interesting, I mean not interesting at all. Um, people phone up with computer issues. I fix them. Um, I don't do a lot of work during the day, and then I suddenly do a ton of work in the last hour, usually, is how I do things. Because I hate deadlines, but unfortunately that's the only way that I work effectively. Yeah, um... Fun times. Computers are my favourite thing, and they are also my least favourite thing because I now work with them. So, there's that. I have not had any tea in a little while. This is... This is going to be an interesting video. If only just because it's it's literally my brain trying to find things to do. My bank recently released virtual cards. Now in the in the US, you guys are US centric, you have something called privacy.com, which is where you can sign up and get basically um, like random one-time one-time use bank cards you can load on um, I think like a buck or two and they're perfect for use when it comes to subscriptions because when the when the trial subscription lapses um, you won't be charged for it because the the card isn't linked to your bank account in any way you like preload it my bank has recently released virtual cards so what I can do is I can put money into what's called a virtual space and I load up that virtual space with the funds that I want and I can use a virtual card on it. So I can I can basically pay out of different spaces using virtual cards. So for bills, I can use like one virtual credit card. Um, for subscriptions, I could use another one. Now, the beauty of it is I can delete my virtual cards whenever I want. So I can create a virtual card, sign up for a trial period delete the virtual card, and like privacy.com, I won't be charged for it at the end because the card doesn't exist anymore. And also, a lot of trial periods, you can only use uh, one bank card, and if you try and use that same bank card, they'll say, well, you've already used this bank card, so you can't use a trial period. Now I don't have to worry about that because I can just delete the card and create a new one. Pretty interesting, huh? It's just one of those features that I'm really happy to see. My bank also released um, a long-term like holding solution, so you can lock your money up for a for a uh, an interest rate for a year, a period of a year, uh, and then obviously after that one year, you you gain the interest if you haven't pulled the money back out. The only problem is is that the APR is pretty low. Uh, in comparison to a lot of other different accounts that you can get here in the UK at the moment. And interest rates are skyrocketing. So it's only a 3.25% APR for one year with a minimum deposit of £2,000. It's a little bit a little bit low. So I'm not going to do that just yet. I also don't know if I'm going to have my job still in March because I'm on a fixed term contract. So locking up my money for a year is probably not the best idea just now. Just another thing that I can talk about. Why not? Why the heck not? I'm going to go up to the top, and if there's nothing else, if nothing has changed, then uh, I... I'm going to call it quits. Before I truly do lose my mind. <laughs> Because 30 minutes of me rambling is probably not the best video going to make. This staircase makes me want to play Minecraft again. If I could even just jump down onto the roof, please. Like, uh, like uh, give me a ladder. Just anything. Please. I was hoping that when I got up here the first time that like I'd, I'd see something coming in from the ocean or or something like that. I don't even have a radio. I don't have a book. I don't have a phone. Have I been exiled here, left to die? Am I a criminal? Can I swim? Apparently not. The game won't let me. 
Whether or not that's an indication that my character canonically can swim, who knows? Probably not. It's probably the uh, the artistic interpretation of me not being able to go into the ocean is is the the fortitude of of the of the the player character um, preventing me from going into the ocean purely just because fear of drowning scares them that much. So they can't go into the ocean, and I can't force them going to, uh, to go into the ocean because their fear is so great that it cannot be overcome, even by an external driving force, such as myself. Bye.